listen up. It's the number one voice of the Tri-State. I'm number one. It, it, it's, it's, it's clicking, clicking up, up 215. So let the show begin. Y'all already know who it is. It's your boy Smooth, and this is Cooking Up 215, where we get you up close and personal with your favorite artists, entrepreneurs, shakers, and move makers. And for today's guest, we have William Toms, the co-founder of Rec Philly. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for joining us, my brother. You already know, man. I'm excited to be here. Listen, I got to introduce you a little bit different, because it's like you co-founder of Rec Philly, but you're yeah. also an author. You got yes, a sir. book. You just... A man of many hats. I'm outside. You already got, got work to do. Serial entrepreneuring it all up. Yes, sir. That's amazing, man. To be a, a, a entrepreneur and an author, like they they put everything under the entrepreneur hat. Right. But an author, I feel like it's different. You know what I'm saying? This is a little different when you're writing books. No doubt. Starting businesses and writing books is different ball games. Yeah, but I'll be honest, man. I never really um, set out to be an author. You no, know? that wasn't. It was just like in my plan. It was more of I think it found me just because the reason that even the whole book, Uncommon Sense, your strategy got to creative freedom. The right. reason it came about is because I was blessed to be able to work with so many different artists, mm -hmm. whether they had different backgrounds, whether they were you know, musicians or visual artists, and also artists at different parts of their journey, right? Okay. Like I was working with tons of artists who were just starting out, but I also was helping to coach some artists who were Grammy nominated, but still trying to figure out the business side. Right. right. And over time, a lot of artists kept asking the same questions. And almost like selfishly to be able to like scale my time up, I was like, you know what? Can we just document this conversation? Right. So then that way, the next time an artist would come and be like, yo, well, I'm trying to figure out my marketing and my branding. Copy and paste. You like, already got it there. Out. You know what I mean? So over time, it was like, all right, cool. I could just put all the rest of these ideas in this package. And um, it'd be like, yo, this is a piece of information that I feel like I wish most artists knew, mm -hmm. but usually don't. So that's how Uncommon Sense came together. So it was Uncommon Sense, mm -hmm. your strategic guide to creative freedom. Right, yep. And is it all about creative things in that book? Is it all about just a guide through music or so podcasts, or The book like is that? actually really about business building. Okay. Right, it's so really, it's broken down into three chapter, or three sections, build, engage, monetize. So what I'm really after for the book is being able to give an artist or a creative, anyone who's really trying to make money through their passion. Right? There we go. A podcaster, you know, anybody. Mm -hmm. And just giving them a, a operating system, like a blueprint to be right. like, yo, this is really the steps it takes to be able to build. Once you build a powerful brand, this is how you start to really use digital strategy to engage people well. Mm -hmm. And then once, you know, folks are engaged, a lot of us as creatives were intimidated by the last part, which is actually monetizing. monetizing. So just making that super plain. So that way any creative could, could get up and say, yo, I'm ready to build my business. And for me, I don't believe that any creators are really lazy. Like, we're really willing to put in the work. Right. But it's that lack of clarity that gets us hung up. That understanding so. of what you need to do. Exactly. That's the, that's the worst part. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm heavy one of those guys where I get stuck in that understanding of what I need to do. Yeah. I damn near, like, overread. I sure. overindulge. I'm, like, picking up every book I can yeah. trying to take pieces of this and pieces of that. That's just you know hiding, though. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I feel like sometimes a lot of us get in that bag where it's like, we're really procrastinating, you know what I mean? So we'll just try to keep consuming information, consuming information. But at some point, it's like, nah, you, gotta you just got to go you gotta outside. Act. You got to yeah. do the work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No doubt. I was just talking to somebody and I was just saying like, man, I feel like that may be the, the last little piece of that procrastination. But mm. it's not like you said, most artists, we're not lazy. We're not lazy. No. And even when we procrastinate, it's not that you you just putting it off. Right. Sometimes you're scared to cross that other side. You know yep. what I'm saying? Some people call it being scared of success mm. or something like that. It's just that, that fear of unknown. That's what it is. You get what I'm saying? Absolutely. You're going into a new territory where you, you wasn't there yet. You're doing implementing strategies you never implemented before. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Yeah, I think you're right, bro. I think um, I used to think most people were afraid of failure. And, and there's a lot of people who are. But I think you're hitting it on the head. Most people are actually afraid of success. And it's because it's one thing. To, to start at the bottom, never have nothing, mm -hmm. and then be able to just navigate that, because that's normal. But to be able to have something and then reach a level of success and fall off, that's a much harder thing to really wrestle with. Yeah. And I think that unknowing that you're talking about is, is hard too, because it's just like, I think Puff said it one time, he was like, yo, like most people fear success because they don't know when the shit's gonna stop. Because mm -hmm. honestly, to me, it's easy to make it. It's way harder to maintain it and to stay on, because there's a certain level of, commitment a certain level of discipline right. that really kicks in it's like 
you know, a lot of people aren't really prepared for that. So yeah. if your character ain't ready for the success, you ain't going to keep it. You're not going to keep it. And, and somebody, somebody literally just, I can't even think of who it was on the tip of my tongue. It literally was saying that, though, about how, like, making it, it's kind of easy. Yeah. It's like, but once you make it, you constantly got to keep doing things to stay up there. He said, yeah. the moment you stop doing things to stay up there, yeah. you just slowly falling. Of course. And I was like, damn, when you think of that, because it's like you could pop right yeah. now. Everything is popping, everything going good. But the moment you go ahead and you stay stagnant, you're just, you're slightly, slowly it's on facts. the decline. You're coming right back down. So it's like, once you get on that treadmill, it's like a, a treadmill that don't, don't stop. That's real. You know I, I like that idea. Like, there's really no neutral. Right? Yeah. You're either going forward or you're going back. You can't pause the, up once, you, once you get into it, you can't pause it. And I think that's what it is, too. Yeah. It's that whole thing of, like, if I once I get into this race, it's like mm-hmm. double dutch. Yeah. I can't get in here and stop. So once I, you know right, what I mean? you got to go. So now I got to, I, I like to make sure, re get mm-hmm. all the information I can, and then... I respect Once that. I get my confidence up, yeah. I'm in there. You know what I mean? I'm jumping in there. Yeah, I think like starting is hard, but again, it's like I think what's most impressive to me when I see entrepreneurs who have been like super successful over a long period of time is that discipline, man. Like for me, right? And we'll I'm sure we'll dig into the story. I but, was just about to say something too, but go ahead, go ahead. We'll dig into the story, but like a lot of people see the success that we have so far with Rec Philly or they've heard about our expansion to Rec right, Miami. Right, going. But for real, for real, the most impressive part of it is literally every day for the last nine years, I've, mm-hmm. I've literally pushed one idea forward. That's and what was the one idea? Of we believe there was a better way for creatives to be able to build businesses mm-hmm. without needing to go to other cities. Right. And we've been doing that same work of empowering creatives to do more of what they love since we started. All right. 2012. So let's get all the way back into it. So you said you started in 2012. My first business. So Rec was born in 2015. 20, 2014. But I've been doing this kind Dave of creative Silver. work. Yeah, that's my co-founder, Dave. That's your other co-founder. My guy, right. yeah. Shout out Dave. Shout out to Dave. So about 14, 15, y'all got started. And the whole mission yeah. was to empower creators to... To do more of what they love. Do more of what they love. Yep. And how did you see yourself empowering creatives? Yeah, so, you know, again, for the context, right? Started my first company when I was 21. Uh, this was 2012. Mm-hmm. You know, me and Dave built a production company. And at that time, it was like, I'm shooting videos. I got my start in, in production, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm running around shooting videos for the homies. You know, we're throwing shows. You know, Dave was doing a lot of the booking side of things. And at one point, we had this company called Broad Street Music Group. Mm-hmm. Literally throwing five shows a week at mm-hmm. one point, right? Dobbs, you know, on a Monday, Tuesday, we go into the Arts Garage, which don't even exist anymore. That used uh, to be the spot, too, man. That was, that was the, the spot, spot, man. Everybody had fashion shows at the, at the, arts, <laughs> at garage. the arts Garage. That's a fact. <laughs> so we was all over, and um, it got to a point where it was like, yo, all of the dopest talent that we really believed in kept feeling that they needed to go to New York or L.A., right? Mm-hmm. Or at this time, now it's like Atlanta. Um, but I was really attracted to the business side, as Dave was. And it was like, yo, we know we could be way more valuable to artists than just putting them on shows, okay. right? And um, that's when the, the idea of the space came to fruition. Um, that's when the idea of building an agency came to fruition to get people paid, mm. you know? And um, yeah, the, the, the real golden idea came when we was in Ninth and Dolphin. You know, there's mm. a warehouse over there. You know, we found this spot, put a backdrop up to shoot my video. So how are we uh, empowering creatives? Yeah, so in the very beginning, um, you know, my background is in videography. So I was doing a lot of video work, you know, shooting music videos, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, My homie Dave was throwing shows and open mics and showcases. So when we brought it together, our production company was going around the city throwing up to five shows a week at one point, Mm. creating content for artists and doing everything we could just to help people kind of get their word out there, help them market. And also I come from the agency world too. So I, I come from digital strategy for very big entertainment brands. So it got to a point where I realized that, like, yo, putting artists on stages, we could do more, you know? Um, And for real, for real, it was about how do we help these creators who are super talented figure out the business side? And, um, you know, over time, all of our favorite artists kept believing this narrative that they had to go to New York or they had to go to L.A. Mm -hmm. And over time, um, you know, Dave and I were like, yo, there has to be another way, right? Right. Philly has everything we need for creators to be successful, but it's just not accessible to, for everyone to get the resources that they need, right? Mm-hmm. It's not accessible for everyone to, to build the right relationships. They don't even know where to go. Right. And, you know, we've always been the kind of social butterfly kind of guy. So, like, 
we over here at this venue at World Cafe Live realizing that these artists got access to these sorts of businesses and these sorts of companies. But then when I'm over here on South Street working with these artists, they don't know nothing about they don't what's know happening. Nothing about there, yeah. Right? It's almost like a different world sometimes when you Real got talk. different kind of artists. Like when you got your neo soul type artists yep. and they hit no stages, but then you got your rappers. Rappers yeah. not hitting no stages. They popping in the streets. Right. But they not, you know, I guess working world. the the, the circuit, like, you know, those right. other artists normally are. Yep. You'll see all those artists doing those different shows, and then yep. it's like, I guess this is where you bridge that gap to where the, you bring those resources to those people that would normally be out the loop. Exactly. Gotcha. So so we got to a point where we're throwing five shows a week at one point, and we got to a space where we're like, yo, we need more consistency. We mm-hmm. need a place that we could really develop this culture that we're after. And um, we found the spot, Ninth and Dolphin, at the where, the Window Factory. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, yo, yeah, I used to be over there. Right the over big there. green, green and white yes, had the sir. white uh, windows on it. Yeah, I used to be down there. They had some studios like upstairs or in the basement. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I got hip to that studio because one of my homies, Leonzo, he's a rapper. Okay. Uh, he was recording with my homie Kenny. He ran a studio called Park House. Okay. And I remember the first time I went to that building, I'm like. Yo, y'all could really do whatever in this joint. Like, yeah. you know, they in there, they blowing that it was down. The spot. Yeah. It was <laughs> everything was, was cool, right? Yeah. And um, you know, at one point it was like, yo, I'm ready to really figure this next step out for for our production company. Mm-hmm. We knew we were ready to pivot and um found the space. And that was such a pivotal thing for us because I put my backdrop up for for shooting videos. We built a recording studio for Leonzo. Right. We had a couch. And over the course of the first like six or seven months, none of the homies who came through ever wanted to leave, Mm. right? Once they came, it was just like, yo, "Yo, we here. So I'm like, yo, there's a reason why everybody's in this, John. And that was when we was like, all right, well, rent going to keep coming. Clearly, the homies going to keep coming. So if we all just pitch up this bread, we can not only pay rent, but we can invest in more equipment, right? right? We could be able to even get more spaces in this warehouse. And, you know, over the course of the next few years, we went from one room in that warehouse to seven. Um, mm. from having just that one room to having two recording studios, having a dedicated visual lab, having a dedicated co-working space. And over the course of that same time, we ended up having like 350 members come into the warehouse at Ninth and Dolphin right? to use the resources that we were building, the tools and the studios, but also they were coming for these educational workshops. So when did, when did things pivot? So mm. w- at one point you create in a space because you... We, we want people to come work. Like, let's just come work. Well, honestly, first the space was there for us personally. Yeah, exactly. Like, I quit my you, job. You and, and the like, guys, like, this yeah. week down here, let's yep. get it, let's grind. Yep. And then you notice the bills is coming, the yep. homies are still sticking around, and then we start a pot, now we got more bread. Yep. When did you figure out that this was something that you could really scale up, pretty much? Yeah. It got to a point, um, you know, there was like a, a real epiphany moment. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? There was one time. It was one time um, we threw a show. I'll never forget. It was a sold out show at Union Transfer on okay. Spring Garden. Um, thousand people in there. It was dope. Sheesh. Yeah, it was a good job. But then I go right back to the warehouse because at that time I'm living there. You right. know, and a lot of people didn't know this, especially not at that time. But I had lived there for almost three years, you know, just thugging it out in that same space. Right. Everybody left. Cool, me and Zoe on the couch. Like, yeah, because you're putting everything into this. Everything. You ain't got money for rent. This is it. This everything. is it right that here. That was everything. Right. And um, at that point, I'll never forget, it's just raining in this John. We on the fourth floor, a super old building, and that John is just leaking right mm. through. I'm on the couch. The couch is soaked because it's raining. <laughs> and I remember asking myself, I'm like, yo, what am I doing right now? Like, everything seemed cool. We got these sold out shows. I had a great job, you know, working for Eminem and Shady Records and all That's these dope. great brands. But I quit that to, to build this business. And I'm like, but why? Why am I sitting here on this couch getting rained on in this warehouse? And um, I asked God that. And God was like, space. Mm-hmm. One of the most valuable things that we all needed as creatives was just a place to be, right? A safe space to express ourselves that had access to all the tools we needed where we could tap in with all of the, the industry experts to really get the game. Mm-hmm. And we had each other. Right. And I realized that wasn't just something that we needed. That was something that everybody whole, the needed. whole city needed. Everybody needed. Yeah. And not even just people in our city, but creatives all around the world need spaces like that. And they didn't exist. So 
that was the seed, and we started building them after that. And they just got the epiphany, sitting on the couch, getting ringed on, and God yeah. said, Space. Straight I can up. just hear it right now. <laughs> Straight up. And I remember I, I called Dave right away, like, and I was just like, yo, Dave. It be those moments, though, man. As, like, a creator, yeah. an entrepreneur, I think a lot of people can really relate to that moment where, mm-hmm. you, where you hear it. Like you when gotta it just follow you. your intuition on that. Exactly. A lot of people don't. They hear something and then they just keep moving, but it's like nah, like yeah. They follow it like for two seconds and then yeah. they talk themselves out of it. Mm-hmm. Let somebody else talk them out of it. Yep. A lot of people heavy into that. Like you know, take that that intuitive moment. Like yo, I had this dope idea. Yep. And you take it to your negative homie and your homie Facts. talk you off the cliff and you like Kill it all. Oh yeah, fuck it. Nah, you right. No. Yeah. You just messed up. That was the one. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like and sometimes you might get a lot of them. But as entrepreneurs, I feel like, you know, you're gonna get those moments. You're gonna get those and yeah. shit. They all could be good cool if you Bro, chase them all down. I agree. And that's why like the the, the people around you are so important. Cause like like you said, you could have that great idea that could really set you off on a perfect path. You take it to the wrong homie and he giving you all the what can't happen, what what you know what I mean? All the negative right. side. But if you got the right people around you that could really be a solid like sounding board for you and, and they're positive and they're like, yo, you could do that, it changes the whole game. Right. So when I called Dave and I'm like, yo, space, he wasn't like, Man, what you talking about? This he was like, Bet. Just Let's said, bro. Yeah. Well, the actual conversation was, <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, yo, Dave, you ready to be a millionaire? And he said, yeah. And I said, space. And he said, okay. And then we had a, a longer combo the next day. And literally, we never stopped since then. Yo, that's you know so hard. It's crazy. Yeah. So I want to get I want to get more into that and talk about that story because I, I feel like it's definitely something special. Like, you really grind that whole thing up. And now... Y'all at a point where you're moving down to Miami, yep. franchising pretty much, and like you building up, you taking it. We you, out. You, you out, you interstate, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, you taking it there. So it's like really, yeah. it's a story in there. Super. And I feel like it's something amazing that like a lot of people don't get to do. And you dealing with a big name, like, yeah, you know what I mean? I don't know if everybody know. Yeah, like you playing up there, the we big the boys, level, the man. Billy boys. You know? It's a different game. Much different. The Billy it's, Boys. It's a blessing, though. Listen, before we get into talk about these Billy Boys, it's time to get into this food. Let's get that. You know what I'm saying? It's your boy Smooth. Will Times in the building. Cooking up two and five. We'll be right back. Let's go. Let's get it. It's our favorite part of the show. That's your favorite. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, Chef. What you got cooking? You already know. You already know who it is. It's your boy Smoothie. It is my favorite part of the show. <laughs> it is time to get into that food. Right and enough. today we got Chef Jig representing Jig in the kitchen. What's up, Jig? What's up, boy? How you feel? Listen, baby, you did your thing with this. I tried a little bit. Listen, man. let the people know what you got for us. Well, I call this right here by land or by sea. You know what I'm saying? You got the salmon, lamb chops, boom boom sauce. The boom boom sauce. Boom boom sauce. Looking special. Right? With the garlic string beans. And. It's the best mashed potatoes you're going to ever eat, bro. The I best mashed you. potatoes. I promise you. I done had some good mash. I promise you. All right, listen, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. This joint then you can knock it all over the floor. I'm going to have to buy a you. bottle of the Boom Boom sauce. Listen, is it's it, It's coming in the bottle it's yet? It's a rim. I'm, I'm really, I'm working on some um, AP seasoning, some AB, you know, flowers and stuff like that. So okay. I got that in the making. All right, listen, you're getting busy. I'm trying. Lord Let them know how they could get in contact with you to get a meal like this. Um, Instagram jig in the kitchen. Um, my main page is Cool Ass Jig, but we talking about this food stuff, Jig in the Kitchen. Jig in the Kitchen? Yep. There you go. This your boy Smooth. This is Jig. Let's get back to the show. Let's go. Y'all already know who it is. It's your boy Smooth. We still here with Will Times, representing Rec Philly. Listen, the food is here. It's here. Chef Jig did his thing. How's it looking? It look amazing. It's looking I'm amazing. Ready to dig right? in, we man. ready to dig in. You said you wanted to bless the food. Yeah, let's, I gotta do that. That's let's cool get into shit. it. I'm, I'm all yeah. for it. All right, real quick. Father God, we thank you for this amazing food. We know this food is going to be a nourishment to our body. In the same way, we know this conversation will be to our spirit. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's we get go. after it. Now we know it's really going to be good. Right, look, it's so, last than look, if my focus is off, this segment is because this food right here, man. <laughs> Let's see. He's talking about these mashed potatoes. Some green beans or something. Oh, yeah, he did that. The mashed chicken? Yeah, he did that. Yeah, I know. I see what's up. We need, we need, we need, we need. 
That's right, right? The man just hit him. Uh huh. The man just hit him. I give it to you, Jig. You said it was going to be good. It's, it's good. Guy. It's a perfect consistency. It ain't too thick. It look like it's thick, but it's light and fluffy. It's like it's a good joint. Yeah, the sauce with is the, with, the, with the sauce, too. The sauce don't overpower nothing. It just hit just right. They some good mashed potatoes. A1. They, they good. They good. A1. So, before we get all caught up in this food, you know, I, I can go a whole <laughs> show and just talk about the food. I'm a multitask. It's good. do it. It'll, it'll do that to me. So, where we left off at, we, we, we spoke about now you and grind mode. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked a little bit about how now you're starting another one in Miami. Mm-hmm. And you partnered up with some people. Mm-hmm. Who is it that you partnered up with for the, for the folks that don't know? Word. Mm. Excuse me. The jig went crazy. <clears throat> yeah, man. So we're in expansion mode right now. Mm-hmm. So Rec Miami is coming next year, which we're super excited about. We were able to pull that off with support from our lead investor in uh, Sean Combs Capital. Sheesh. You know, the one and Sheesh. only Puff. Say it again. You know, P. Diddy and mm. Puff and the team. Love, you know, whatever you want to call them these yeah, days. Yeah, Mr. Love. Um, but, you know, it's a special partnership. You know, we're talking mm-hmm. about one of the, the very few black billionaires know what I mean, in the game, and someone who really, truly understands creative entrepreneurship. Right. You know, and has done it at a high level for decades. Right. So, to me, it's special because it's like when you have somebody at that level of the game understanding what we're doing on the ground and the way that we're community building and the way that we're resource sharing, it just means a lot because he's somebody who's literally had to run through walls, right, to get to his level of success Mm -hmm. and has said, you know what? How can I be able to invest in something that's going to really be able to break down those barriers and make it easier for the next generation? And um, I think anytime we can have those sort of collaborations between generations, man, a lot it's of a special, game changer. It's a game changer. You know, game a lot of special stuff can happen. It's, it's, it's also such a, um, um, I don't even know how to say it. It's almost like this. Um, you show people that it's possible that you can truly start from nothing from Philly Mm -hmm. and get somebody like Diddy to invest into your dream, pretty much. And we're not even talking about you a rapper. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how we look at it. Like, the only way you're getting these dudes coming out, you know, to cut that check is when you're rapping and dancing for them. Like, no, they really invested in your business and they see the vision. Mm -hmm. And now you're making your way down Miami. And the crazy part about that is that it's just the Miami market in its own, in itself. Right. That's a vicious place to start. For sure. You get what I'm saying? So you got some big dudes coming on, and you getting this huge grand gesture, pretty much. Like, yeah. Miami is like a grand gesture. They didn't just mm-hmm. say, all right, let's go to Jersey. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know? They said, no, Shout let's go Jersey. to Miami. Like, let's yeah. turn up. Yeah, and that was strategic, you know? Um, for us, we want to take the model to places that are like Philly in the sense of, There's tons of creativity there, tons of culture there, tons of talent, Mm -hmm. but they're not the first places you think when you think of like industry cities. Right. Right. Miami's that way too. There's so much talent there, so much culture. Uh, But the other thing is, you know, our vision has always been to build 50 of these around the world. Mm -hmm. Right. We knew we wasn't just solving a Philly problem when we built REC. Um, And Miami just has that international visibility, you know, as a city that unfortunately Philly doesn't have yet. You know, so Mm -hmm. for us to be able to, build it here in our backyard, you know, and honestly, I'm grateful that we got to build it here. I right. feel like, one, if you could build it in Philly, you could build it anywhere, right? We exactly. Um, but you can survive here, you can survive anywhere. You know, but two, just because of the talent here, you mm-hmm. know, but for us on the next chapter, it's like, we about to really set it off in Miami as well, knowing that there's going to be folks from cities around the world who are going to see Miami and be like, oh, well, I need this back at home. Right. right? So I think it's just super strategic and you know, Puff has a big interest in Miami. He's lived down there for a while. Has has you know made that's a lot his of home spot shape. too. That's where he based at right you now. Know? So that's yeah, the stars did. came together. You know, God God lined that up. You know, in a special way. So how did that play come about? I know mm-hmm. when you started the business, you went down to a revolt um, wow. situation with yeah, like you really DJ Khaled. Yes, and, sir. Uh, La Reed was mm-hmm. down there. Yeah. So was it like? Did you meet them down there? Did you have ties to Puff and them previously? Not at that time. Or that just was just a coincidence? I don't know if I believe in coincidences, but it was definitely a beautiful foreshadowing. Yeah. You know? Um, So for context, when I was still working in the agency world, 
I had an opportunity to go down to Miami uh, for Revolt Summit. And mm -hmm. it was because one of my clients was Liv. I don't know if you know about Liv, mm. you know. Club Liv. Wayne, yeah, and all mm -hmm. of them was rapping about Liv on Sunday. So I was doing a lot of the digital strategy for Liv. So they were like, yo, we got this Revolt Summit happening in the same hotel where Liv is at, at the Fountain mm -hmm. Blue. And um, they were like, yeah, we want to send you down there to do live social media. So I went down there. I hit Dave up. I'm like, yo, you might as well just pull up, bro. Let's just go down. Right. So this is Revolt Summit probably back in like 2014, Yeah, 2014. Mm -hmm. um, nothing really came of that, you know, as far as like relationships with Puff and his team. Mm -hmm. So we fast forward um, to like 2019, right? Rec has always done a lot of amazing educational programming. That's one of the things we really are passionate about. Right. And we had a panelist, a woman named Lindsay Rieblin, who runs the, um, she's the head of insights and strategy at Revolt. Mm -hmm. And after the panel, she was like, yo, what y'all are doing at Rec is crazy. She's like, I've never seen nothing like this. The level of engagement from artists hungry to learn, the, the community feel. Right. And um, she was like, Will, you got to know Tarek. And I'm like, Bet. who's Tarek? Right, yeah. Right? Show it to me. I'm right? like, who's yeah. Tarek? <laughs> and I quickly found out that Tarek is the president of Combs Enterprises. Mm. Tarek is, essentially runs almost all of Puff's businesses, all the ones under that umbrella. Right. And um, we hit it off immediately. I find out Tarek from Southwest Philly. Like, I find out, you know what I yeah, mean? Like, yeah, he understood. It's always like that, yeah. It's like that. Philly is really everywhere, you know, right. in the industry, for real, for real. It's a lot of people that come from here that go off to do some crazy things. Absolutely. Right. You know? And this is, like, one of, one of the reasons why this is here, because, like, a lot of people don't get to know who those people are. It's a fact. You know, we got some execs in a lot of those rooms. It's a fact. And nobody and knows that these people exist. Yep. And they out here moving and shaking and really making a way for a lot of people even here. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? Way. These are the people that help make those phone calls to get the little young boy that's, that's killing it up there. That's it. Yep. So, yep. so we, uh, you know, started talking to Tariq, hit it off with him. You know, he loved what was going on. Mm -hmm. And then they put us through the ringer on the due diligence. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't, you don't mess with the billionaire club without them really wanting to understand what's the model what the projections look like. Right. And I think one of the things that um, is important for a young entrepreneur to hear is like, there were real times as we're developing that deal where I was scared. Cause I'm like, yo, I didn't really like allow these guys to see under the hood fully. Like I done gave them the whole model. They know the play. They know where we going today. They know what my plan is for three years from now. They know where right. we're gonna be in 10 years. And you know, these are people who have the resources to, if they wanted to. You thought they might run off on the plug. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but there's just such an important self-belief, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, of understanding it's not just the model, it's our team. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm also adding value to this table. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So that conversation went from, yo, let's go through all the ringer. And then it was like, yo, we really dig this. He flew out, him and um, the homie Jay Lundy, head of investments, came and saw the space. He wanted to feel it, you know mm. what I mean? And after that, it was like, okay, this makes sense. But let's mm. also make sure it makes sense for all the other businesses under right. the umbrella, you know. So I got to do a lot of FaceTime with, you know, Datavio over at Revolt and, you know, get to understand the Spirits team and how Rec could be valuable to them. And mm. at the end of the day, it just all made sense. So they, so they pretty much let you see the other ways this business might be able to be implemented or those other business might be able mm -hmm. to be implemented into your business. Absolutely. Because you know, now you're part of the family. Exactly. You know, right. we're talking about investment, right? So like. Puff is now a partner of ours for the distance, right. you know? So we were like, yo, let's do all the work up front to figure out really what all that alignment looks like. And then uh, once we got most of the way through that, I had an opportunity to go out there. I spent probably about a week in Malibu at his crib and uh, worked on a bunch of projects just to really kind of, you know, feel that, that creative chemistry and, you know, mm. really get to know more folks on the team. And then a couple months later, the deal was done. The deal is done. The deal is done, man, so. Okay. It's a blessing. So what do the deal look like? What does it entail? Is there like a years with this, a certain amount of spaces with this deal? Or is it just we locked in and we just build it? Look, man, Puff really believes in, in the vision of creators deserve to have resource hubs, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it wasn't a deal where it was like, hey, I just want to invest in Miami. It was a no, 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 I see this vision for REC at, at, at the, the grant scheme. Right. So, you know, he put in a couple million 
to be a part of the the full vision. The full vision. Yeah. So we we on the ride. We on the ride. That's a good thing. Boy, Absolutely. that's crazy. Absolutely, and I think that means more. You know, it's not like it definitely means more. Yeah, it's not. Oh, I'm in Miami. I love Miami, so I'm investing. Nah, mm-hmm. it was no, no, no. I see, I see the vision here, and I know. And that then this you don't, be you don't just put a cap on it. You right. know what I mean? There's no cap on the business. It's not like exactly. All right, I'm down to do three of them with y'all. You right. know what I'm saying? Or nah, a ten year venture. Dave and it's I, like, we we learned that really early. Like, we didn't want people who were only interested in Philly or only interested in a certain city. It's like either you get it or you don't. Mm-hmm. And if you get it, you want to be a part of the whole thing. Like, you know, we're building a business that's going to be worth hundreds of millions, if not a billion dollar business one day, right? Yeah. So it's like, nah, ain't, ain't no point in just piecemealing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Did you ever hear of WeWorks? Of course. Okay. Well, I'd be, I so I'm, I'm, I'm be sure a, a lot of people, yeah, it. all right. So did you know of WeWorks like before or after your situation? I knew of WeWork before. Um, okay. So the, the businesses that inspired Rec were not WeWork. You know right. what I mean? Like, I was more inspired through businesses like Uber and Airbnb. And we mm-hmm. can dig into that if you want. Um, but the reality is the thing, the model of WeWork is actually very different than the model of Rec. Right. Both of them are resource sharing and co-working, right. if you want to think of it that way. But <laughs> when WeWork talks about community or talks about culture, they mean something completely different than, than what, what we you mean talking about. when right. we're talking about that, right? And then secondly, it's like, at WeWork, a lot of people do like, dedicated space so yeah. if you got an office at WeWork when you leave no one's going in your office yeah but at Rec if you go in the studio and then you done and you leave somebody, somebody else is else coming in, in that studio so yeah. Rec really at the heart of the model is more like a gym membership than it is like a WeWork right it's just a gym membership for creatives gotcha you know what I'm saying yeah definitely no I fully understand just was wondering because they seen a lot of success so it's almost sure. give you like this picture of the vision of like where mm-hmm. you potentially could go and i understand when you say you use like uber as a model mm-hmm. because you want to you wanted to figure out how you can reach a lot of people with one thing all at the yeah. same time what i what i like for uber and airbnb is it taught me this uber at the time when we were starting out was the fastest growing transportation company and it didn't own any cars Mm-hmm. Right, Airbnb, fastest growing hospitality company, but they didn't own any property to do it. So for me, the nerd that I am, I'm like, all right, well, when is this resource sharing concept going to come to the entertainment space where you could connect somebody who needed something with the thing that they needed or the person they needed and you wouldn't have to own their businesses to do it. Right. Right. And the whole game of entertainment has always been the label comes in and they need to own the artist and then they tell the artist what the value is and you know, it was the same way in Hollywood. Like, people were giving up all their intellectual property for an opportunity. Mm-hmm. So for Rec, it was always been like, nah, like, come to Rec, create what you want to create. You own everything. Mm. You know what I mean? And not only are you going to be able to get access to studios, Rec members could literally open up their app, type photographer, and they're going to see 60 people pop up that they could just reach out to and send a message to. Mm. Right? A Rec member, if I am a photographer, I could wake up, go to the job board, and there's a bunch of gigs on there that I probably had no idea about but now I could throw my hat in the ring and be able to, to get money. Right. And for me, it's like, yo, people deserve to be able to have access to these resources and these tools, and they shouldn't have to give up ownership of their business to do it. Right, you should be able to just have access to these things. That's it. And I want to talk a little bit more about you and mm-hmm. your plans beyond rec. So sure. you got Uncommon Sense. Yep. So you go got Alter Under the Belt now. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Let, let the people know definitely to go get that. Mm-hmm. And you sold out first day. That's crazy, right? Yeah. That's super, super duper crazy. That was did you think that was going to uh, do numbers like it did? Um, like, did you see this many people was going to be sorting out your book like that? I'll be honest. I feel like people have been waiting for me to drop something. So I okay. knew the support would be there, but I did not expect it to go like it did. Mm-hmm. You know, at this point, you know, we sold out the first 500 copies in literally like 12 hours. That's crazy. And then got another 500, sold those out, <laughs> you know, and that's happened two or three times now. Um, so it's a blessing, but for real, for I don't take it to my head and be like, oh my God, I did this amazing course, thing. Yeah. It's more of like, there's a real hunger for this information. You know what I'm saying? And right. there's a real opportunity, especially for people who look like us, to make real money building businesses around our passion. And um, I think it's just a sign of the times, you know, people have been waiting for this kind of information and maybe through a lens like mine. Definitely. You know? So, got the book. What else That's is that. next? I mean, you got the deal, you got the wreck. It's, it's a lot next, What's man. What's next for Will Times? 
So if you're asking for me personally. You personally, what are your you know? goals and dreams from here? I mean, you already scratched off some big ones. That's big, man. Where do you take it, though, from here? Look, I mean, in my 20s, I built. You didn't make Kanye. That's a fact. <laughs> yeah, that's, crazy. Like, you know that's I mean? a fact. It's like a lot of shit that people want to do. You didn't already kind of did. Like, yeah, that's a blessing, man. You know, I, I've met Kanye. I'm in business with, you know, someone I've admired my whole life with Puff. I built a million dollar business in my 20s with my best friend, Forbes 30 under 30. 30 under 30. You know, I published my first book. So for me, man, this next decade, you know, my 30s, I want to be the one that said, yo, I took something special that I know is valuable for people. And we scaled it up from a multi-million dollar company to hundreds of millions or a billion dollar business. Right. And then after that, you know, in my 40s, I probably want to be a venture capitalist on the other side. Just take you it all the way up. Yeah. So I could be able to do exactly what I needed, which was to have that person who I know has an amazing idea. And I'll be able to have the cash to be like, all right, cool. Let's let's speed that up. That's my dream, too. You know? That's, all, that's always been my goal. And then after that, to empower knows. the people, man. That's it, bro. That's what it's always been about. A man of the people. It's always been that, bro. Like all the the Forbes and all the the, the surface level stuff is a blessing, and mm-hmm. I'm very grateful for it. But for real, for real, our start, you know, for Dave and I has always been let's build something impactful. It's always been yo, let's help people make money because if we help other people be successful, we'll always be successful. Exactly. And um, yeah, I think we're just living proof of that. Exactly. Help those you'll always be good. That's it. So let people know where they can get the book, follow Mm -hmm. you, keep up with what you have going on and everything like that. Cool. So once again, the book is called Uncommon Sense, Your Strategy Guide. Oh, I'm going to this camera. Appreciate y'all. The book is called Uncommon Sense, Your Strategy Guide to Creative Freedom. You can go cop that right now on the Rec Philly website, shop.recphilly.com. Grab it there. If you're lazy, you can go get it on Amazon too. (laughs) But... If you, if you really love us, go get it directly from us, shop.recphilly.com. Um, and yeah, yeah, if you want to stay more in tune with my story, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter. It's at the Will Toms, T-H-E, Will. Last name is Toms, T-O-M-S. And then, of course, go follow Rec Philly on everything. You know? <laughs> on everything. On everything. Listen, we appreciate you coming through. Appreciate you, brother. It's been wonderful. I hope you enjoyed your meal. Of course, once these cameras is off, I'm oh, really going to dig in. You know, I got a black one. I got to take this <laughs> off and really dig in. But listen, it's your boy Smooth, Will Times, Black Philly, Uncommon, Common Sense. Mm-hmm. Go get that now. Cook it up two and five. We out of here.